In this training video, we will demonstrate the linear technology LT3032 part and the creation of the PCB footprint part with two variances of the default pad stack as shown on pin number 4 and 9. With the multiple variances in today's technologies, there's two options we can use. We can standard use the standard IPC QFN package calculator or in this particular case with the multiple variances I'm going to select the QFNB variant calculator which can handle these additional variances that are coming out in today's component technologies. With the QFN variant calculator I can explicitly control the exact number of pins on the side which can vary between the different uh, QFN packages in today's technologies. Setting the number of pins to 7 on the top, 7 on the bottom, and the pin pitch to 0.5. Changing the T value to 0.7 and the width of the W value of the pad to 0.25. I will now use the associative editor to change the component dimensioning information. A to a value of 4.0 and B to a value of 3.0 from the data sheet. I will now have the basic pattern on grid with pin 1 at 0, 0. Let's bring up the data sheet and take a look at the first variance or pad stack which we will be modifying. Under pad tools I will select the pad stack calculator to bring up the pad stack calculator to handle the different variances from the standard QFN package. The first step will be to click on the new pad definition and we will define a new pad stack. The T and W's default to the pin or lead values and I will define the X user and Y user to 1.78 by 2.575. The first step will remove the lower cutout section from this specific pad stack. With the new pad defined, the basic outline shapes defined, I will first save the pad as a variance. Giving it the unique name that I want to save it at for this particular part. Next I will move to the editor tab and click on that specific variance. Clicking on the mark and cut will bring up the form for performing the editing functions. But before we perform the editing of the specific layers we will need to make the specific layers visible or selectable for the area removal. Once the layers are visible then I will move back to the editor tab and define the area that I wish to remove from that specific area. Selecting the mark will put the mark on the lower left portion of the selected area. To offset it, a negative direction of 0 0.250, I will apply a X offset. I now have the blue marker set. To set the red marker with the applied offsets of 0 0.9250 from the blue marker, I will mark the red and then subsequently mark the green marker. Performing a three marker corner cutout will cut those areas from the pad stack area. Now that we have the basic area, let's take a look at the areas which we wish to chamfer and round. I will take down the cut and marker form and moving to the editor tab bring up the modify shapes form. Let's first click on the corner that we wish to chamfer and applying an offset which in this case defaults to 0 0.1 I will select invoke to, to chamfer the specific corner with the selected amount. Selecting the other corners to round including the interior corner, I will click on round and select invoke to round the additional corners. I have now completed the editing of the specific shape and will select the move shapes command, group select, and click on the group select rotate to bring the shapes into the specific alignment. We will now move all of the shapes to the origin of the pin with the move command. Zooming in on the specific area, 
I may need to change the snap grid under grid to bring the specific snapping to the exact XY coordinate pair. Zooming in, changing the snap grid to 0 0.01 with the rounding on this particular data sheet, I will now have the resolution to snap it to the exact XY coordinate. I've now completed the first variant pad stack with the pad stack geometries aligned along center of the lead, which is the white outlined area of the lead definition or pin definition. To place this pad stack and replace it, let's move to the mapping. Click on pin number four on the package. Click on swap select packages and we swap this particular package. Now you notice after swapping that we have an error somewhere with the geometry. Going back to the data sheet, we will note that we have a dy direction of 3.50, but in our b definition, the value is set to 3.0. In Footprint Builder, the calculators are re-entering. And what this means is I can modify the form entries, select generate, and regenerate with the new values but keeping the variances that I manually modified. Now that I've completed the first variance, let's take a look at modifying and creating the second variant for pin number nine. Bringing up the pad stack calculator and selecting new pad, I will enter in the geometry values of the new pad. Once again, I will make sure that all the layers that I will be editing are visible and I will select generate with the new X and Y pad area definitions. In this case, 1.07 by 2.575 in the Y direction. Completing the basic outline of the pad shape, I will now save the pad stack as a variance, giving it a new definition or name. In this case, I will call it second variance. Saving it and moving to the editor commands to make the modifications to this particular stack. Clicking on the stack, the first step will be to select the objects and the matrix and cut command. Let's first step at the marker at the upper left corner. I will select the object which I wish to mark, clicking on the upper left corner in the anchor set and click on the mark button to set the marker at the up left, upper left corner. We now want to move the original marker down a offset of a negative 0 0.9250. Typing in the Y value and select mark to move the marker down and the red marker now with an offset of 0.375 and then a positive direction of the original 0 0.9250 with a three corner mark cutout. Click on remove markers to remove all of the current markers. Selecting the upper left corner of the first marker, I will set the marker at the XY coordinate and I will reset the marker with an offset of the pin width of 0.25, moving the blue marker and then typing in in the Y direction to set the red marker of a negative 0.925 and then apply the green offset to the green marker of a X direction of 0 0.445. Once this is complete, I will select the three marker cutout to remove the selected area. I'm now ready to add the additional rounding. Let's take down the marker form and bring up the Modify Shapes form by clicking on the Modify Shapes button. Clicking on the specific corners I wish to round, I will apply an offset of 0 0.1, clicking on the round selected corners and the Invoke button to round all of these selected corners. I'm now ready to align the pad geometries with the pin or lead geometry as shown in the white bounding box. Bringing up the move, let's group select 
all of the pad geometries. Selecting group rotate will rotate the group areas 90 degrees with each click, bringing it into the correct alignment in terms of the rotation. Let's now select move any to move the geometries to the exact coordinate pair. I will zoom in and change the snap grid to the resolution that I'm working with in this particular data sheet. Moving the geometries to the exact coordinate pair will snap it to the specific coordinate and I now have the pad area aligned along center of the pin or lead. I'm now ready to replace this geometry into the original package definition by moving to mapping, clicking on the variant with the pin selected in the package view and swap this variant pad stack with the original pin definition or pad definition associated with pin number 9. I have now completed the second pad stack variance per the recommended land pattern definition per the manufacturer's data sheet. Now that we've completed the footprint definition, let's go back to the data sheet where we've been modeling the part from the recommended manufacturer's land pattern definition. Scrolling through the data sheet, we will notice that the land pattern definitions for the top pad layer is a D-shaped pad. Now, once again, the importance of having a reiterant technology or reiterant calculator will be demonstrated as we go back to the component view. On the component tab, I will select the body shape and select generate. And I will keep the selected pad stack variances, automatically updating the remaining D-shaped pads, but keeping the two pad stack variances which I wish to retain. Exporting the part to Allegro, I've now exported the part, keeping the original two variances and the updated D-shaped pad stacks. We've now completed the LT3032 part based on the recommended manufacturer's land pattern definition with two variant pad stack definitions and updates applied with the reentering capabilities of footprint filter.